Hi, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. This is your second session looking at the balance sheet of a company. In the previous session, you looked at what a very simple balance sheet looks like. You also know what are the different components of a balance sheet, assets, liabilities, and shareholders' equity. And you also know what makes up assets and what makes up liabilities and how to read a basic balance sheet. Now, you're probably wondering, what is this visual doing up on your screen? It has a logo of Lehman Brothers, the famous investment bank in New York, uh, or was an investment bank in New York. Uh, you have this picture of this guy, you know, he's clearly disappointed that the stock markets are just crashing. Uh, these visuals essentially represent what happened in the whole financial crisis of 2008. And, and the reason I have this visual here today is because I wanted to explain to you how critical the whole balance sheet is to a company and what role that played in the, in the 2008 market crash. Uh, on Wall Street and within financial circles, the whole recession is essentially called a balance sheet recession. And I'll show you why it's called a balance sheet recession. I'll show you what happened. So a, a brief timeline of what happened was back in 2008, it all started off with this investment bank called Bear Stearns. It was a legendary investment bank. Bear Stearns filed for bankruptcy. The company collapsed and JP Morgan ended up buying Bear Stearns for I think $2 a share or something. And, and I think finally they settled on 8 or $10 a share. And then a few months later, this uh, extremely prestigious and storied investment bank Lehman Brothers collapsed as well. And, and one thing led to the other. More banks, more financial institutions collapsed. The American government had to finally intervene. They're still intervening, and um, that crisis spread to Europe. It's beginning to spread to Asia, and people are concerned this just might be a world recession. And how did this all start off? It all started off with companies mismanaging their balance sheet. This is what happened. Uh, as usual, we're going to you know, go straight into Excel. Uh, this is a financial crisis of 2008. Lehman Brothers. Let's get that spelling right there. Lehman Brothers. What happened in Lehman Brothers? Now Lehman Brothers, they went and took a loan. You know, all companies take a loan, so there's nothing wrong with taking a loan. Let's just say Lehman Brothers took a five billion dollar loan. It was probably um, much higher actually, but for our purposes, we're just going to say Lehman Brothers took a five billion dollar loan and then they went and bought assets. They went and bought assets, a specific kind of assets called mortgaged backed securities. We won't go into the details of what a mortgage backed security is, but for now, they bought an asset called mortgage backed securities for the same five billion okay they took a five billion dollar loan and then they bought a five billion dollar in asset there's nothing wrong with that companies do this all the time Domino's will go and take a loan for five crores and they'll go invest it in opening restaurants with five crores companies do it all the time to grow their business but in this special special case what happened was since Lehman Brothers is essentially a trading company and investment bank they were hoping that this five billion dollars in assets will actually grow to 10 billion or 15 billion or 20 billion in a few years and then they can sell the assets and make a profit of 10 12 billion dollars and then just pay out this five billion dollar loan and they would still have a net profit of like uh, I don't know seven eight billion dollars based on how much uh, you know profits uh, they actually made but the trouble was five billion dollar in loan and five billion dollar in assets. Lehman Brothers expected that the assets would go up. What actually happened is that the value of these assets went down. Yeah? So this five billion dollars actually became one billion. Or in, in, a, in a lot of cases, it became 200 million. So the value of the assets went down 40%, 50%, sometimes 80%, 90%. And in a lot of cases, the assets were worthless. So $5 billion just poof, just destroyed from your account. But the problem is your assets went down, but your liability is still there. Who, the Hoover you borrowed $5 billion from, 
he is waiting to get the $5 billion back. He doesn't care if your assets went back or went up or went low. He expects his $5 billion plus his interest or whatever term Lehman Brothers agreed on him. Now, because the assets went down, Lehman Brothers has no money to, it has nothing to sell and make a profit and pay this guy back. So you see the first thing that's happening here is Lehman Brothers is collapsing because its assets went down. The second thing that's happening is this whole whoever maybe this is another bank maybe this is like JP Morgan or Goldman Sachs they probably lend Lehman Brothers this money they're not getting back their money because Lehman Brothers has no money to pay back that company now that company probably similarly owes money to some other company and they're not getting it back because Lehman Brothers didn't give it to them and they didn't give it to them and similarly that company is probably get, get, getting money from another company so it's a whole vicious cycle and that is essentially what led to the collapse of 2008 yeah Companies borrowed a lot of money in the hope that they will buy assets and the value of the assets will go up. But what essentially happened is the value of the assets crashed to $200 million, 10% of the equity. So they had no money to pay back. That's essentially what led to the crisis. So essentially what happened was the American government, in all its generosity, intervened and they told Lehman Brothers, I mean Lehman Brothers collapsed, but other investment banks, they told them, hey, hold on, I realize you have all this, you know, useless assets on your balance sheet. So let me buy it, you know. So I am going to give you cash. Uh, let's say if you have assets for $5 billion, the, the market is probably going to, is telling you that those assets are worth only $1 billion. But forget about it. I'm going to pay you almost the value of that asset. I'm going to pay you $4.5 billion in cash so you can clear these, you know, toxic, uh, invaluable assets off your balance sheet. Poof. Now you see what happens this is a much healthier balance sheet. Lehman Brothers owes $5 billion to a, 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 a lender and the government just gave it $4 billion, $4.5 billion and the remaining $500 million they can somehow, you know, do, you know, put some business and, uh, you know, pay it back. But you saw the previous case what happened. If the government had not intervened, this investment bank is stuck with a $5 billion loan and an asset that is worth only $200 million. So the bank has to come up with $4.8 billion to pay back that loan. And that's next to important. I mean, these are obviously small numbers we're talking about. But when it actually came to real examples on Wall Street, it was the order of $8 billion, $20 billion, $30 billion. The numbers are ridiculous. Morgan Stanley, I, I think, lost $8 billion. Uh, Lehman Brothers, people are still calculating how much money was lost because of that. Uh, I mean, estimates are at $25, $35, $40 billion, uh, But, you know, you, you'll never know. So that's essentially why this was called a balance sheet recession. Okay? This was why this was called a balance sheet recession. Because companies smart people grossly mismanaged what the value of their assets are going to be at some time in the future. Now similarly, that brings us back to the focus of our this session is, the focus of this session is going, actually going to be to get into the details of a balance sheet and we have realized before that the best way to understand about understand a financial statement better is to actually look at a real balance sheet which we will do by looking at the dominoes balance sheet and we'll also uh, get familiar with this you know fundamental basic concept on building a balance sheet called double entry balancing and we'll go over what both those are and you'll better understand this whole financial crisis when you're done with this session so uh, you, you, you know, you, you again remember that, you know, going back here, your, this is your income statement that we built a few classes back. The, this talks about the operations of a company, but doesn't really give you this, the financial situation of a company, the cash balances and things like that. And you obviously remember this simple balance sheet that we built. This balance sheet is actually talk, gives you about the full financial snapshot of a company, the cash, how much inventory the company owns, the, how much money the company has to give other people, uh, so on and so forth. Now, and, and, and you know, I, I keep insisting there's only a simple balance sheet. So we're going to go into a real one, uh, uh, the Domino's balance sheet. Where is, there it is, okay? And we're going to see how different is this and what is the difference? You know, you're already beginning to see, oh my God, this looks nothing like the balance sheet Binnie taught me last class. What is happening? Patience, we'll go through this and you'll understand it's not that different, okay?
let, let's let me keep the other one also open for quick comparison right here okay so let's start off here and to begin with you remember I said a balance sheet is the status of a company as of a specific date right here you see as of March 31st 2005 these are the balances of the company and that goes on from 05 06 07 08 09 excuse me so for five years um, the company has been kind enough to lay it right next to each other so it's